Today, I'm introducing the intuitive Georgie Mason, the British artist whose abstract work creates narrative through emotional transference. It makes us feel. Sometimes called gestural abstraction or intuitive art, it just fills the room with a certain energy, in this case, Georgie's. My name's Georgie Mason and we're in my studio on Stepney City Farm. I didn't make a conscious decision to become an artist. Having been surrounded by it from quite an early age, my mum used to be an artist whilst bringing up me and my brother. Uh, my dad is of part-time sculptor. He makes like life-size Africa animals. Yeah, I grew up in a really creative environment. I remember we had this book, 365 Things to Do on a Rainy Day. It rains a lot in England. So <laughs> I was doing a lot of creative things. It was always something that I was gonna end up doing. My painting style is quite influenced by my background in, in literature. I did my dissertation on Iris Murdoch and her book, The Sea, The Sea. And my first solo show in London was called The Sea, The Sea. And it was taking a lot of inspiration from her book and her philosophy. I started off painting kind of abstract landscapes and I'd take a trip somewhere like Scotland, take photos, make rubbings, write poems, like get really immersed into the place and then come back and paint based on what I'd seen and what I'd felt, the feeling of somewhere. Areas of intrigue at the moment for me are things like traditions of painting, so grounding myself in, in those ancient traditions, but also then finding my own way of kind of being part of contemporary art and making it my own. And I'm looking at lots of contemporary artists such as Josh Hagler. I want to bring in some you know, elements of kind of my own life, personal narratives, sort of collective mythology, symbolism, that sort of stuff and also sort of fit that into my interest with materiality and building up layers and sort of excavating and taking apart and putting it back together. Art for me is a way of making sense of things. I think it's quite a subconscious process though. I think its purpose is to connect people. I think it's innate in us, like breathing and connecting and I think expressing is just biological need. One thing I like about Georgie's work is that unlike many abstract artists, her work is, is not idealized. While the final pieces often express uh, vibrant energy, because she first infuses the canvas with her layers of stone and sand and mud, she gives each piece this imperfect foundation. Then she adds the color. The metaphor is just so clean, so vulnerable, it's very human. The way that I work is I, well, I tend to start by kind of meditating. I get into the right sort of headspace because for me that's so much of it is being in a place where I actually want to create naturally. You know, I want to rather than sort of feeling like it's work and trying to squeeze something out. I wake up about seven o'clock, have a cup of tea in the garden, do some shaking, <laughs> some dancing, and then I bike into work. I usually meditate in Victoria Park on my way in to get into the right sort of headspace. I do that and then I come into the studio and I kind of look at what materials I'm going to use. The way that I'm working at the moment is anchoring my practice or area of intrigue in something. So that could be a person or a place. From there, using materials and processes that somehow relate to that person or that place. If I was doing a series on Stepney City Farm, I would walk around Stepney City Farm, I'd take photographs, again, I'd take rubbings, I'd dig up dirt from the farm, I'd pick up straw. I'd basically gather a load of kind of evidence <laughs> or like personality of that space. And then I'd bring that in to the studio. I'd like to be remembered for bringing together nature, art, humanity, for me, that's what's so important about making art, is bridging the gap between nature and art, and putting the mud into the canvas and sort of saying, you know, there's really no separation. And for me, it's about slowing down and bringing back what is important. A world without art would just be, I'd be so depressed. I have to be in such a colorful, creative world. 
why do we really make art? I think in some ways it's a sort of human innate desire to leave our mark. I think it's, an, it's a very natural, quite beautiful thing. But also it's obviously a kind of way of communicating and I think it's a way of connecting. I think humans thrive on stories. I think we need it and we learn from it and we can, that's how we grow as well, is through new ideas and thriving off each other's originality.